With Fluent Car due to be released relatively soon, I want to take a look at one of the key new features that's been added in very recently to one of the latest betas, and that's the integration options and how we can integrate Fluent Car with some of the other Fluent products right now. The integrations are going to expand when this is released and we're going to get more options, but these two I think are incredibly useful. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, if you're in the Fluent ecosystem like myself, you'll know how useful it is to have all these tools talking to each other. And the integrations feature that's being brought into Fluent Cart, I think makes things so simple, it's just crazy. Now, I've been looking at moving away from Circle for my community for WP Tets and moving it over to Fluent Community. But there's been a couple of things that have held me back. One of the key ones is setting things up to handle payments and subscriptions and those kinds of things. You can do it with the Fluent Forms, but I don't think it's the most elegant way of working. But I knew that they were gonna be bringing things like this into Fluent Cart, so I've kind of held off. Let me show you how this all works and why I think it is really super useful if you are in the Fluent ecosystem. So I created a course subscription product, which is a subscription digital product. So if we open this up and scroll down, you see it says subscription, there's the price. It's a yearly subscription. So we've got it set up. So every year this would be renewed, standard subscription. Let's go over now to the integrations though. And inside here, we can now create some integrations for this specific product. So let's go and add an integration. Currently, we have Fluent CRM and Fluent Community. This is going to expand to other Fluent products and I assume to other non-Fluent products as well. And that'll be super cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, first of all, the Fluent Community, because I want to handle this to give access to various different parts of my community. Feed title. So because you can have multiple integrations for the same thing, in this example, Fluent Community, you're gonna to want to name these accordingly. So we're gonna call this Fluent Community Annual Subscription. So what happens when this integration runs? Well, we want to add people to some spaces. Now, spaces allow you to get access to various different conversations where you can have like support for your courses, a general chat area, those kinds of things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to click to drop this down and you'll see I've got two inside you at the moment. So let's say when someone subscribes, they get access to both of these. All I need to do is click to add them in and I can add as many as I want from my overall setup with Fluent Community. Then we've got courses. Courses, pretty obvious how it works. So what we can do is we can choose, do we want to add them to courses? Let's say that by purchasing this annual subscription, they get access to all the courses, free, paid, everything. Well, let's drop that list down and choose the courses from the list. So now we're saying when they take out this annual subscription, they get access to these spaces so they can get involved in the community and they get access to these courses. You've then got remove from spaces and remove from courses. So depending upon how you set this up and what the trigger is to make this integration run will depend whether you want to add them or remove them or combination of both. You can stack these however you want to. Again, you'll see the same options inside you. Same for spaces, same for our courses. Then we've got the mark community profile as verified. So do you want to mark them as a verified paid up subscriber kind of thing? Let's say yes, because it's nice to add that little sort of validation. And then we've got remove from selected courses, spaces, when there's a refund or there's a subscription access expiration. So in other words, when they, this subscription runs out. So it will say, yes, we want to do that. So they'll be added when they paid. And then if that runs out or they refund, they will be revoked. That's basically what's happening. Then what's the event trigger? What do we want this integration to be triggered on? Choose the option from here and you can see we've got a bunch of different options. We want to choose the order paid payment subscription, but there are other ones. So order cancel, order refund. And this kind of comes in where I'm saying, do you want to remove them? So if they choose, for example, the subscription is canceled, you could say you want to remove them from certain spaces, but leave them have access to others. So you can create multiple different sort of integrations here between Fluent Community and Fluent Cart. For this, we're just gonna say order paid payment subscription. So then you've got the run on selected variations. So let's say instead of just having an annual subscription, we had a variation product or variable product that has a monthly subscription, a yearly subscription, a lifetime subscription, and maybe a trial subscription, where you can choose a variation from this list. Currently, when you have the basic standard one, and then you can choose what happens inside this integration if it chooses a particular variation. So you can have one product, multiple variations, and multiple integrations, all triggering different things inside you. You can see how powerful this could actually become. 
We'll keep it as it is now. So once they pay, they get access to these spaces and these courses and we'll say create it. Boom, job done. It's active. You can disable it if you want to. It tells you what the integration is, the name you've given it and what the trigger is. Want to edit it? Not a problem. Come in, edit it. It's all available to you there. Want to remove it? Simply hit the little delete trash can. Gone. So that's handling the integrations into the community. Cool. That's pretty much what I've been waiting for. Let's add another integration and say Fluent CRM. Now this is going to work in fundamentally the same way. So we've got the feed title. So let's just rename this. So just this, this is a subscriber. Then we've got add to lists and add to tags. We've got our list, which allows us to kind of contain all of our different, in this example, customers. So we'll choose that from the list. If you had multiple lists, you could add them into multiple lists from here. Generally, I say keep your lists simple and use tags to organize the people inside those lists. Otherwise, when you have lots of lists and lots of tags, it all gets very segmented and becomes a little bit of a nightmare to manage. This isn't specific to Fluent CRM. This is the same with any kind of email marketing tool. Then you've got your tags. So let's just say this is now going to be tagged as an annual member. So once this integration runs, they'll be added to the list of customer and they'll get the tag of annual membership. Want to add more in? Not a problem. You can add more inside here as well. Then we've got the same as we saw with the community. In this example, we can remove from lists and remove from tags. Again, you may have a use case where when someone becomes a paid subscriber, they add it to the annual membership and maybe remove from the free trial membership. You can add and remove tags as you see fit. If you want to add a note to that particular contact profile inside Fluent CRM, you can do, and you can use the little short codes to pull in their name, their city, the different details and so on inside you. So you can see there's a lot of different options, including things like order ID. So you may want to track the order ID when they actually take a subscription. You can add this in, grab that dynamic data, store that in the contact profile. Pretty nifty. Then you've got the option to enable double opt in. If you are using that, you can set that up inside you. In some cases, it doesn't make sense. In other cases, it does use it as you need to. And then we've got the same thing again. Do you want to remove of those tags and lists if they have a refund or the subscription expires? And then you've got your event trigger. Again, all the same options. So we'll say order paid. And again, you've got your variations. So what we're doing here is we're basically, let's create that adding them into various different parts of our community, and we're adding them as a subscriber and tagging them inside our Fluent CRM. Then we can go and set up things like a welcome email sequence that tells them, thank you very much for joining the community. Here are some rules and guidelines for how to get involved. Then maybe a day or two later, you want to send them another email that says, how are you finding the community? You can then do other things. So we can tap into all the different kind of options we have inside Fluent CRM and have them set up with the annual subscription. But as I said at the top of this, what makes this so powerful is we can set up multiple integrations with various different triggers to do various different things inside the community and inside Fluent CRM. And this is only going to get more powerful. This is the thing that I've been waiting for to potentially move over to Fluent Community for my own community. As soon as this comes out as a final release, I definitely think I'm going to be digging into this and setting things up for myself. But what are your thoughts? Are you interested in what Fluent Cart brings to the table? Do you like this whole ecosystem thing? Do you like the fact that you all talk together and you can have all these different tools doing different things? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.